What's up, everybody? Hey, Yo, what's up? I wanted to talk to you guys. Um, Cause I, I graduated three years ago uh, with my master's degree. And uh, I've been finding that the purpose of being a musician is very difficult to find when you don't have a degree dangled in front of you and uh, finding meaning. You know, I always had like this idea that I was going to be a classical player only and that not only would people want to pay me to do that, <laughs> he would show up in droves to see that and he'd be showered with praise. That's kind of like the indoctrination you get in conservatory. But I've come to a really rude awakening that there's a lot of work to be done for us uh, and a lot of work for independent artists to do in order to build their own audiences. And so a lot of that requires that you forge your own paths and you find your own passions and you build an infrastructure around that. And you all have very unique abilities. You all have very unique, diverse backgrounds and you still come together for the Vitamin String Quartet. So I'm curious, like, I want to hear from all of you, like, what was that moment that sh that inspired you or shifted your paradigm to think, you know, I'm actually, I'm not going to do what my teacher expected of me. I'm going to do what makes me passionate and makes me happy with music. And then how does that continue to inform and motivate you moving forward? There's a lot to say on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we can go That's around. We can go around. Yeah. And it's then we can circle. keep the, yeah. Uh, I, I, Tom, yeah. I feel like I always, when I started playing viola, yeah. I already liked so much other kinds of music uh -huh. that that was just, it was like, Villa was just a side thing. I was like, oh, this is cool. Uh -huh. Something that's fun. Uh -huh. And then at some point, I think it clicked like, I want to combine viola with like my love of hip hop music and like yeah. alternative styles of music, non-classical music. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you get into school and you work so hard in this yeah. classical world yeah. to get the chops, you know, and the skill set to be mm -hmm. able to perform this kind of music. Um, and I think that's totally invaluable to, and especially with an instrument like a string, a bowed string oh, instrument yeah. or any like orchestral instrument to have the skill set that orchestra gives you, mm -hmm. uh, chamber music, the mm -hmm. intensity of chamber music. Mm -hmm. But then after that, you know, when you get out of school, you're just like, what the hell am I going to do? I can play viola yeah. really yeah. well, yeah. but, yeah. but like, that's what? about it. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> That's How do I do my taxes? How do I do taxes? Yeah, you know? right. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think crazy. it's a rude awakening, you know, when you get out of school and you realize, like, wow, I'm going to have to start teaching. I'm going to have to find ways to hustle music. I'm going to have to take every gig that comes my way, um, at least for a while. Yeah. Uh, and then, ultimately, I think if you have a passion for something, you just go for that, whatever that is. So, mm -hmm. for me, it was maybe more non-classical music. Mm -hmm. So that sort of led me down the path of like playing with hip hop orchestras, playing with hip hop artists, artists learning how to record music, mm -hmm. um, which are things that just sort of, you just learn on the on the job. And know? it's like you're developing new skills. It's like, it's not like once you leave school, you stop. That's and when I the think, learning begins, honestly. Yeah, that's when, it, that's when it starts. It's like, now what? Like the practical application of this like very isolated world of classical music. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much other music to, to learn and to, mm -hmm. to get into your blood and to learn how to play and, you know. And it like, it's still like, even to this day, I'll go back. We we did XXX Temptacion mm. and we did Dvorak. And for me personally, I really felt like I played Dvorak in a way that I've never done it before. Like these other genres really, for me, inform all of that. Leah. What was your experience in this like? Because uh, if y'all don't know about Leah, she does a lot of jazz and you're a singer as well. And so how did that kind of start happening? Oh, man. Well, I, I got an injury over a century when I was 15. Oh, so man. that's why I started singing. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was just concertos and stuff. And then I, yeah, I overdid it. Early on, most people develop some kind of problem in, in college. It seems like that's when you're yeah. really going at it, mm. yeah. going for it. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. but like yeah. So 15, I I went to a performing arts high school. Mm -hmm. um, I had always been writing songs, just at the piano. I'd always compose songs. I'd always been into um, other forms of music, like especially jazz. Mm -hmm. And um, 
it occurred to me like, okay, so yeah, I went to college for opera. I got my degree. In I didn't opera. know that. Whoa. I tell people I double majored, but I was actually, I got into the Austin Symphony when I was 19. So I was paying for college <laughs> with my, yeah. With your opera singing. Uh, well, no, <laughs> the, playing in the Austin Symphony. symphony. Oh, yeah. Oh, which oh was, sorry. Yeah. Which was, yeah, negligible, but because it was a part-time orchestra. But oh, I, okay. um, and then I started, uh, cut my teeth playing with bands in Austin. So I was like, um, dating this guy I was really just friends with a bunch of jazzers and <sighs> sorry I shouldn't say jazzers jazz cats that's what you make of it you know <laughs> and they were like you should kind of I mean you're singing jazz why don't you try and improvise on the violin oh and god I forbid right terrified <laughs> oh, yeah I'd like kind of done a little uh, experimenting but yeah, yeah at 19 I started like trying to improvise I took some jazz classes at school mm -hmm. um, on the side and then yeah I after college I was just really into the idea also this was just a side thing mm -hmm. um, auditioning for Cirque du Soleil so every time Whoa. they come in have an, uh, and they never wanted me to stay <laughs> they never took me that's cool but that's okay though. because there was something else that somebody told me about this show called Barrage and I sent my tape into them yeah. too so right out of college I went to straight to China and I was with them on the road like what? around the world for a, a year no so I was way. 22 and that was really cool and I um, did that for a year got home and continued to play with bands for those three years after college mm -hmm. and it just kind of everything just kind of yeah I kept on doing yeah but you saw an opportunity and you, you didn't turn it down you like embraced I was just saying it. yes to everything yeah. like, like what said, Tom said we yeah. all had to say yes to everything while kind of shaping okay taking this I like that I like this mm -hmm. and I want to make something like or kind of having all these different things going on just mm -hmm. in case one pans out <laughs> yeah you know mm -hmm. and so it's not just like you make a decision it's kind of like as time passes it's like a rite of passage you kind of got to do you see the where work. yeah and you see where yeah. like what are my um talents and I'm still learning how how mm -hmm. to do this like mm -hmm. where what am I best at Mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. kind of focusing on that. Mm -hmm. what, do I, what do I enjoy the most, too? Yeah, what yeah. makes you most happy. That's right. what I feel. Mm -hmm. little, little known fact is is Leah uh, gives me jazz lessons from time to time. So uh, yeah, you're doing great. continue to thank you, but <laughs> I'm still scared. I, I, I'm, I'm g becoming a jazzer. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's still a lot of work to do. It's a, it's a lifetime goal. Well, it's a completely different musical language yeah it's got don't you i mean don't you agree yeah Jazz it's is like got its completely own set of rules just so, even the way it's like talked about like i remember studying music theory in college and never hearing about seven chords right well <laughs> yeah that's jazz theory but it's all but it's all over classical music it's all almost more complicated than classical music it's really intense yeah. like the really jazz awesome. study is yeah. unbelievable. Giant steps, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Derek, tell me more about about you and and what your the origins of like your self discovery. Well, I mean, you know, I feel like I, I think we could all probably say the same thing. There was a certain expectation put on us when we were beginning to learn our instruments. You know, when it comes to what we would do with the with the skills we were being taught, mm -hmm. and um, I was introduced to playing, you know, contemporary experimental music when I was a sophomore in college. Okay. And as time went on, I started doing that more and more. I, I kind of became, you know, less interested in tr more traditional things. And mm -hmm. so like that came out in, you know, in college, we were all required to play chamber music. But by my senior year, I was like done with string quartets. <laughs> it's like, I'm not doing it anymore. I'll do some, I'll do anything else, but yeah. I'm not doing string quartets. So yeah. like, I did a, a trio with a clarinetist and a pianist. And we mm. did like, we would do transcriptions of Piazzolla. Mm. Oh yeah. You know, we, that, we would do that kind of stuff. That's dope. And um, then I, I kind of rode that contemporary music train through grad school. Mm. And um, like directly after I graduated, I got, into these two groups one is like a modern music chamber orchestra mm -hmm. and the other is a quartet um the instrumentation is clarinet trombone cello and piano oh wow that's fascinating and we we um kind of revamped this rep that had been written for a group in poland in the 60s 
and a big amount of rep that had been written for a group in the 90s in Germany, same instrumentation. What? So we started playing all of their rep, and okay. then we had like, I don't know, we probably added like 40 pieces that composers had written for us what? to the, that rep that what? exists. That's what? And so, you know, I, I get to do a lot of really fun out there stuff, which I'm totally, that's like where I live. What's that genre? You told me the genre of music that you make. <laughs> What's it? What? Oh, yeah. Well, this is a joke that my, I have an older brother that plays violin in the San Diego Symphony, uh -huh. and he calls it squeak fart. <laughs> squeak fart music. <laughs> which is totally appropriate. Yeah. Uh, it's a little offensive, but totally appropriate. <laughs> Dude, we gotta we we gotta get it trending on Spotify. Like we, we gotta make it squeak squeak, squeak fart squeak trap. It's like a new versioning genre. We gotta get that going. That's fast. And I kind of just fell into both of those groups. Uh -huh. I mean, the quartet. We're all kind of like we call it. We're all co-founders of mm -hmm. the quartet. Mm -hmm. And the other group, uh, the cellist, at one point was attending Colburn, and then she got an assistant principal job in Australia, which is where she was from. Wow. And she had, uh, one of the other guys in the group had recommended me to sub for her once. Mm -hmm. And then once she left, they just kept calling me. And, and like, I'm the only cello player that's done a gig with them since then. Opportunity. Which is really cool. What I love about your story, and I think it's super important for people who are, you know, 18, they're going to college, you don't know what they're going to do, is like you found something you had you, you worked with what you had you worked with the configuration that wasn't normal mm. but you built it and then they came it's kind of like apple creating ios and then third-party app developers developing apps for that system sure, yeah. it's like you create a group maybe stuff doesn't exist yet but maybe it doesn't exist yet because nobody's tried and then there are a lot of people there are a lot of composers out in the world that want to write music yeah you know, especially interesting stuff. So I think that's a su that's a super, uh, not only brilliant, but I love how it worked out so seamlessly. And I know at the time, I guess it didn't work out seamlessly. I mean, like, there, was, there was a through. lot of like, you know, that that quartet was a total passion project. Yeah. For the first, let's see, we're kind of on high, uh, indefinite hiatus right yeah. now, but we started in 2011. Oh, wow. Okay, and yeah. then... Oh. Our last season was in 2000, at the end of, we finished at the end of 2017. Okay. And, you know, the first maybe five seasons of concerts, we were all self-presented. We were renting all the spaces. We were wow. paying for the piano to be tuned, all that stuff. The last two seasons that we did, were, we were completely, every concert was presented by someone. Wow. And we got to play on the main stage at Disney Hall, just the four of us. Wow. For, um, they do a new music event every year called yeah. Noon to Midnight. Mm -hmm. Noon to Midnight. Mm -hmm. I forgot it. to mention something that <clears throat> those three years after college, yeah. I taught like 30 students. Really? I taught mm -hmm. 30 students. I mean, a teaching week. is a big part of it. Yeah. Especially if you're, I mean, I feel like that's one of the things that we are kind of led to believe, at least I kind of was led to believe that like if we practiced hard enough, we would get a job playing in an orchestra yeah and like it's amazing how i mean maybe it was never said it was those words were never spoken yeah but i felt i, I feel like i was led to believe that yeah. to a certain it's extent like a, a pipe dream or yeah. something like yeah. That. Yeah. yeah and it's like that's just not going to happen for everybody in fact it happens for fewer like, people than, few. than you know than it happens more yeah. but um teaching is like such a big deal and like if you really you know, whether you're doing it because you really like it or you're doing it just because you've got to supplement your income. Yeah. Like, I think that's a thing for most of us. That's, the, you, know, you know, it's funny <laughs> you that's brought funny. up. We'll, we'll, get to, I, we'll get to, I want to hear Amanda's story in a second, but just so funny that you mentioned teaching because I posted a picture of like us in, and I tagged you guys. And Tom, one of your students actually like, oh my God, that's Mr. Tom. <laughs> and like one of your students DM'd me. Oh my God. It was like, he like really influenced me. Now I'm like Whoa. studying music and stuff like that. So it's like, you I never know. I can't wait to teach again. I mean, right? I, I just want to do, I want to perform, but I really want to return. I plan to return to it as, as all of us might. Someday yeah, you're teaching me. It's not no, a teacher. Right. Rewarding thing. Right? So. Yeah. I miss it. I do. I, I do too. My students were so amazing. But, and the way that she reacted, she, you could tell she uh, 
adores you, bro. Mr. So there's something to be said about it. <laughs> Mr. Tom. No Mr. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it works. It, so, um, Amanda, like, tell us a little bit about, like, what you've been up to since school and, like, mm. like what the mm. impetus has been for you. Um, you know, it's really interesting to listen to everyone's stories. Mm -hmm. It's different paths, like you were saying mm -hmm. initially. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it all led us to the, a similar place. Like, mm -hmm. we're all sitting on these couches together. Yeah. Um, and I, I find that so interesting, whether you started with opera, or you started with hip hop, or you started with burp, squeak, fart. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's, um, it's, it's really, uh, I think what you were saying about like the structure that people have set or put into play for us um, and how it gets broken um, and it's okay for it to be broken um, and to find your own and forge your own path. I think that's key. Um, as far as my path, it's you know very similar. You start with one goal. Um, I had a, an idea that I was going to be like a, a soloist when I was a little kid. So I was doing the the competitions, and my teachers were teaching me all the concerti, and I was just sitting at home and shredding. And then I got to college, and I was like, okay, well, solo is is too late for me. I'm no child prodigy. Off I go to orchestra or whatever, as if there's some sort of tiered expectation of yeah. um, of what's better or, or what's more successful. Um, and then I was dropped into um, a friend's band um, at NYU, and they were like improvised, and I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, a, I remember it being like like a G minor like pad, and I was like, oh, hell oh, no. Yeah. I can't, I yeah. can't, I just know. And, um, so funny. And they were literally like, you can play anything you want, and that I went home and had like a breakdown. I was like, this is so intense for me. Um, and that's the best key to solo. <laughs> literally, and you, and you go in and you're like, all these emotions that people have been telling me to put into my classical music, yeah. how do I do that with this? And then you're like, oh, the freedom. And so, yeah. it, you know, it launched a whole different thing. And um, from what it sounds like is it opens up an opportunity to seek out what you're really trying to play, mm -hmm. if it's jazz or I can't call your music burp squeak anymore. I'm really incredible New contemporary music. music. Contemporary, <laughs> All the skills. Yeah, harmonics. <laughs> harmonics, lots of harmonics. Um, yeah, it's 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 all really relevant and important mm -hmm. and acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, and then the idea of <clears throat> making a living on top of that mm -hmm. is also key. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think everyone said really amazing things about like their careers and how to get there. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that one of the big things that I like to focus on nowadays is like, you know, hiring equality and pay equality for everybody, for men yeah. and women mm, yeah. um, in our industry, making sure that it's not just hiring like a gaggle of women to back some artists, it's yeah. equal, um, yeah. you know, and I think that's I actually really had key. a situation, I was asked to do a gig, and then they were like, actually, we've changed we're, our we're, lo we're looking for... Yeah, and you know what? That's okay too for yeah. for for looks and and whatever you need. But yeah. um, I'm really a big like proponent of um, supporting you know pay raises and and fair pay and yeah. treating us you know respectfully and with like a lot of um, support. It's expensive to. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's, it's an expensive career. You you had something. Oh, I was just wanting to add. Just to add, I mean, more about like the landscape of where music is going for string players mm -hmm. yeah it's a really exciting time you know it's, right? it's like yeah. it's like the wild west you know uh, musically there's just there's no place that we can't go in now and yeah. like do things that string players never did before yeah so mm -hmm. it's pretty exciting time i think and you're only going to get as far as your creative mind will take you so if you're not willing to explore and see where you fit in and see what feels right for you and forge your own you know path in music mm -hmm. i don't think you know maybe it's not for you you that's know bars. or maybe just stay in the orchestra lane because that's cool too yeah, yeah. i got love for that as well I miss yeah. the yeah. totally i mean there's something i mean when i get called for classical work i'm like awesome. let's go i get yeah, to flex too. those chops yeah. it's amazing we like, got to play the Vorjak, and that was like yes. so about so it totally. oh my god weeks ago i played with yeah. a orchestra down near San Pedro mm. and we played Dvorak 7. Mm. Oh, and that's... And then yeah. there was a soloist and we did Sibelius Violin Concerto and I never played either of those pieces. Oh, really? That's just like a breath of fresh air. Yeah, oh, it was a lot of fun. Do you guys go to festivals anymore? Music, fe Classical music festivals? No. That's where I really learned that I wanted to do this 
I, I, I had the realization that I've been losing a lot of faith because I wasn't going to like the Brevards or like <laughs> the, uh, the, the Colorado College Music Festivals where I was around people like me and playing music that really resonated with me and having those experiences with those people. Because mm -hmm. when you are working for money, you don't necessarily get to do what you want to do. <laughs> you don't necessarily get to work with the people you want to work with. And then people aren't always passionate either. And so, like, I find it incumbent upon myself to try to be as excited and uh, vivacious as I possibly can in every gig. And I find that that's not something that's really talked about in school. Like, um, how you are as a person, how you interface with your colleagues, it's, it's an indispensable factor to success. I wanted to quickly talk about uh, the improvisation thing because was it you, Amanda, that said that you kind of like broke down? Oh, and, like had yeah. had a little bit of a yeah. I've never told the story, but I had I had my birthday last year. I turned twenty eight. Just moved. To, I had been in LA for a month, almost a month to the day, and I went on Facebook and invited everybody I knew in LA to come to my house for birthday party. Two people showed up. <laughs> that felt really great. <laughs> but it was also like, then we started jamming, right? Mm. And before then, I had always resisted the idea of improvisation. And so everybody was jamming. Everybody had their, like, there was a violinist, there was a pianist, there was a singer. Uh, my roommates were present. So we got <laughs> percussionists and things like that and singers. Spoons. Spoons. You know, we were, we were going at it, but having a good time, doing musician things. But I was, the whole time I kept thinking, where's the sheet music? Where's the sheet music? And I had it a minor mental breakdown and anxiety attack by the fact that I didn't have the tools to interface with these people mm -hmm. and interface with music. And it was that moment, at least for me, that I was like, I have to change. I have to give up who I am right now in order to become something different. Maybe not better, but something deeper. Mm -hmm. And like, have you guys had similar similar experiences like that yeah it's just it's one of those things that even to this day i think back to that time and i'm like i don't want to ever feel like that again well isn't that the the basis behind anything that you study or attempt that you can always improve on it and i think that's maybe one of the biggest misconceptions of improvisation is that it's this thing that you just make up and it just is you know yeah. it's not quite that like of course you can play whatever but I had a, um, an old fr a friend of mine is a really well-known um, bluegrass fiddler, American violinist. And um, I was uh, starting to improvise. Uh -huh. um, so it was like breakdown, starting to improvise, yeah. went to him for advice. And his advice that always sticks with me is like, well, how long have you been cl playing classical? And I was like, well, since I was five. Mm -hmm. And he goes, great, you're 18 and you want to improvise. It's going to take a little while to mm -hmm. practice. and. Um, get good at it, you know, not just make up things over the things that you think sound good, <laughs> you know, and even the language like you guys were saying, it's com it's different. Um, this, the scales or the fingers are different. Mm -hmm. The kind of expression can be different. Mm -hmm. It does merge together, but um, it takes a long time too to practice it and get better. You know, mm -hmm. I'm sure when you started doing oh. it at 15, like you go back and you listen and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> those are the choices I made. And now you play and you're like, ah, I've matured. I have this the settled. sound, I have this language, yeah. this is my voice. Mm -hmm. And that's really cool. That happens in classical too. And yet there's yeah. still yeah. always so much more work to be right. done. Always. I, I do feel like with improvisation, it's you're just going to have to get used to maybe not feeling as comfortable as you used to and sounding all that good. Yeah. Um, yeah. But eventually that starts to go away a little bit and little by little. I mean, I, and, and I think if you're trying to learn to improvise, putting yourself in situations where you're forced to improvise right. mm -hmm. and then just get rid of your ego and just, and, and working with people who are open and, you know, accepting of yeah. whatever. I mean, yeah. it's a learning process and mm -hmm. putting yourself out there is like 90% of, of improving, you know, and, and just going down that path is just, it, it's, it's amazing what you can get once you start to go down that road. Mm -hmm. It reminds know. me of stand-up comedy. Totally. Um, I listen to a lot of stand-up comics. I've been thinking about dabbling in it and by myself, but that that's another story for another day. But it's the one thing that comics always say is like, 
it's the one art form where you have to practice in front of other people. Yeah. Right. And like, you really can't fake it. If they don't laugh, it's not funny. <laughs> and that means you need to go back. So I guess this idea of improvisation, if you go and improv and it just was whack, it's like, I better go practice some, some D Lydian scales again. You know? <laughs> I, I, I've been touring with Rye for like the last five years. Uh -huh. and I've been to like, I can't count how many countries, but like, I would get a featured solo uh -huh. every night. Uh -huh. And I, I remember I went back and listened to a show we did at Red Rocks in uh -huh. Colorado, which is like an incredible venue. It's like the Hollywood Bowl of Colorado. Oh, wow. and it's gorgeous. It's amazing. And I was just listening back to my solo and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like, how, I, like, you know, I've already been playing with the group for over four years oh, at that point. Yeah. I was like, I gotta get better. Yeah, I gotta find a way to make my solo more interesting for me. Like, the people might have liked what I was doing, but I wasn't happy with it, so. I have a question for all of y'all, and I think this is kind of fun. Because VSQ is a quartet, but it has a lot of different people, like, involved with it. But you guys have such a really strong rapport with each other. And I'm curious, how did you guys meet each other? Like, go back. did you meet each other separately? Like, what, what went down? Yeah, well, What's I've known Tom the longest. Yeah, by least, far, so. maybe like 10 years or so now. I moved here nine years ago. Yeah, yeah so whenever you got here, we started because we, we ran in the like improvisers circle, yeah. <laughs> the circle of, you know, of the small group, which is expanding. It's grown. It's totally Quite grown, yeah. which is incredibly cool. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Lee and I would find ourselves on similar gigs just because we're we can swing, you know, yeah. and we've got a loose vibe when we're in the music. And, you know, yeah. we bring a lot of fun and energy, I think. Uh, and then I met Derek. Uh, on the first VSQ thing I did, which was the Troubadour show, which was what five years ago, yeah, which was incredibly wow. cool. Like I know everyone here through Vitamin String Quartet. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Except, for, except, except, except for me. Yeah. Except for yeah. yeah. We did Spiritualize. Yeah. Uh, it's the singer songwriter uh, thing. How did you? I how met did you? you guys at the same time. Basically, well, sort of on that those sessions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sessions. Yeah. 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 Um, and I met them through VSQ. Um, but I had met his sister a couple weeks prior, which is so weird, on a session in New York. Whoa! Um, it's just a small, it's a small world. You end up nearby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom and I did a really cool uh, Brazilian jazz gig together mm -hmm. like a month ago with yeah. Arthur Barakai. We were stand partners and uh, bless your heart, man. You were just so sick. <laughs> you were yeah. so sick. But he was, was a fun. trooper. The thing is, dude couldn't keep any food down, but he was the, he was the most hype person in the <laughs> show, man. He's sitting here grooving. As soon as the rhythm section comes in, he's in it. What happened to the food? Oh, I couldn't. I had the stomach for that. Oh, so so I was like, and I was like, this is Verokai. Like, he doesn't come from, he comes up from Brazil. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, this is, I'm if I don't this. make this show, yeah, 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 I gotta do it. So I was like, all right. I can only imagine. I just yeah. didn't eat the whole day. I was like, I can't uh, keep anything down. I'm just not going to eat. I've been and there. I got through it. Yikes. Yeah, it's, it's rough. What, what's, what's, <laughs> what's your favorite, uh, favorite performance that you guys have done with each other? I feel like oh. you guys probably have. Um, so, like a bunch of fun stories. What's one that comes to mind? And maybe you all are going to play with Annie Lennox. That was really oh, you cool. did. Yeah. She's that's I, wow. I put together a ten-piece orchestra for her, that and we great. did like. Oh, that's yeah, cool. We like played great. the Orpheum. That was really cool. Yeah, that was a PBS special. Right. That what? Was rad. Yeah, that was fun. That's crazy. I was on the ship and I played "Walking on Broken Glass." Mm -hmm. We did a piano quintet version of that, but I've never, never that's seen cool. her live. What about, what about you, Derek? What's your favorite like VSQ like memory or performance? Man, it's hard to. I feel like I've been doing it for so long. Yeah. Like I started playing with Vitamin Screw in 2011. Wow. Okay. So you've been around. For um, I mean, everything. Everything's been super fun. Mm -hmm. You know, like I wouldn't be. A, there's so much stuff I've done with Vitamin Screw that I wouldn't have done otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, I had a fun time bringing, I brought Derek in to record on a, a singer-songwriter's record, Jonathan Wilson, he's incredible. Uh -huh. That was awesome. And Derek and I just hung out at this guy's amazing house in the, in the Hollywood Hills and like, <laughs> just basically freestyled string arrangements on this guy's record and came up with so many gems, like, 
and wow. just have you listened to that? Oh, album yeah, it's though? really yeah, great, it's man. Really it's really good. fun. Yeah. So that was fun getting to what's like, it called? Plug, plug, plug. Uh, Jonathan <laughs> Wilson, uh, <laughs> the artist. Uh, Jonathan Wilson, the artist. The record is uh, it's something about a bird, like like a bird, or Don't anyways, remember. he's incredible. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all it's worth yeah. checking out. This is his latest record. This is latest. Yeah, late, late and um, yeah. I went to I went and bought the like deluxe vinyl nice. of it because I really wanted it. I didn't know <laughs> I didn't know if we were gonna get it, you know. Yeah. I just really wanted it. I still don't have it. But it's amazing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the like all, you know, the whole deal. It's like colored vinyl and like yeah. oh, there's so man. much beautiful it's psychedelic, and, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really, cool. Oh man. What's, what about you, man? What's a what's a salient VSQ moment? You've had you so know? many. We had yeah. all that press yeah. in New York. That was such a fun, like, fun. like we had a week. bunch of fun yeah. trips. You know, yeah, we did this week in New York where we had two show, like two, like the we had two gigs at what was the name of the Rockwood? Rockwood. Rockwood? Rockwood? Yeah. yeah. Was it recently? That was two I weeks. Like, two I came to one years ago, maybe. Yeah, I came to one of them. I met yeah, yeah, that's the first time yeah, I met. That's you. the first time we met. Was that one of those met. shows? Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And then that's where I moved. We did all. We did all this kind of. We did a. Paste magazine uh -huh. session, uh -huh. which was awesome. Uh -huh. And then we played for like Martha Stewart Living. What? Like part so, of Was her... that the day that we did like a three day? <laughs> oh, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. yeah. And we yeah. did um, a show three for X, uh, FM, what, XFM? Oh, XM? Classical Radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. XM, XM Radio. We did like their classical show. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, yeah. Did and, we do Spotify um, at one point? Did we do something? Or no, that was in Spotify. I'm trying to remember. There no. was like a hallway with all the LEDs. Napster. <laughs> oh my god! That was, that was Napster. That was, that was it. Rest, that was rest in peace. Building, right? <laughs> yeah, serious. Yeah, serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. And um, then the last thing was what was the last thing? It was like it was at One World Trade Center. Uh, oh, it was well, Bridal, was, Bridal Magazine. Bridal was Magazine. The, yeah. We did like an Instagram live for Bridal Magazine. <laughs> was, yeah. We were like, I don't know, how many floors? Like 75 floors? Yeah, they kind of that whole building. I almost yeah. got us. I all, because of my attitude, we almost didn't get into the building. Really? Yeah, because I, think I missed that because I we were we went to the wrong door, right? <laughs> and we were waiting through, you know, because you got to go through a bunch of security to get in. And <laughs> One of the security guards walked behind me and like knocked really hard on yeah. my chest. He's like, "What is this?" And I was like, "You don't have to touch it." And then everyone looked at me, and I was like, "Oh, oops, yeah, I forgot wrong, where wrong we place, are. wrong place." <laughs> yeah. Oh man, we got in, we did it. It's no big deal. That's yeah. so crazy. I can I can I tell you my favorite VSQ experience? Yeah, man. <laughs> This one right yeah. here. This is my first time. Yeah. I am so honored yeah. that I got to spend this yeah. time with you guys. Were you waiting for one of us to drop that one? I was no, no, no. It, was, it was fun. Today. No, it, it was, was really easy because I did it. And, and <laughs> it's been a while. I've had such a profoundly <laughs> I, I really feel connected to you guys. This was a yes. fun project. Thank you so much for yes. welcoming me like a part of the of course, family. Dude. Uh thank you for sitting down and talking with me. I think uh yeah. you guys are stellar human beings and i hope we get to continue to work together in the future yeah man salute yes. cheers salute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.